Okay. So I think from the standpoint of sparing YouTube, or not sparing YouTube, sparing Twitch, uh, we're just going to go ahead and clear the rest of the story. I'm just going to add a little bit to the end of the prior video uh, rather than make its own little thing, just because I think we were pretty much there. So I'll, I'll cut the content down a little teeny bit on the previous video. But essentially all I'm looking to do here is skip as much of the dialogue as I can. And I guess for the people that are really curious, they could check it out. But for most other people, it's fine. There's just a little extra here. So I'm just going to go and see if I can get some kills with these other characters. And I figure if something weird happens, I might as well as record. But I think for the most part, we should just be kind of stomping them from existence. It is nice to see that the levels are starting to catch up a bit. And again, that extra speed might make a big difference. So I feel like already I dodged a hit I probably wouldn't have. Oh, XP up here. Nice. Nicely done. And their minimum level is 100 on some of them, so that's kind of good. Yeah, now I'm seeing pretty much nothing but misses, which is great. Easy battle. Got an extra pair of boots, why not? Yeah, I think between the two of them, they should just be able to kill basically everything. I did not do that properly. There we go. But I think with Rogue Nine's new armor, Thousand defense is really good, so if he needs to tank it out longer, it might be worth it. I think he also got like another 200 in speed, and we've seen the ninja speed seems to be paying off, since we were getting hit basically every other time. He's sadly almost out of SP. But on the plus side, he managed to get to S rank in, uh, or 8 proficiency with his S rank in this is what I meant to say. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Oh, this is just getting sad for them. I think with this kill, I'm officially where I was before he transmigrated. That took like no time at all. More importantly, he got like another 20% towards his proficiency, or 10% towards proficiencies. And... more raw stats. So three, three or four more attack and being disadvantaged for like three or four maps is kind of not a big deal at all. Nicely done. Also means that the fist item, the god hand we picked up from beating the other place is putting our attack power to almost 3000. So this is higher than his attack power has ever been. So if they do decide to attack him, it's not really a big deal. He's very likely to survive. Kirk has basically returned to full strength. Kirk took a little longer. Rogue Nine took like zero time to catch up where we were before. In fact, I think it's, uh, his fist proficiency is higher than it ever was. We're going to leave briefly just to restore our stats here. How unfortunate. See, so yeah, I'm going to save where I feel towards the end of a stage, because, again, I, I can't lose at this point, but I just want to make sure I don't accidentally do something like clear a stage, start another chapter, lock ourselves out of some bonuses. Oh, that's cute. They have sap bonuses. I don't know if that matters. Wow. I guess it shows how broken Laharl's attack power is, that he's as strong as the ninja. Or I guess it shows that the sword being 1200 attack makes a bigger difference than the god hands of Dalsen. Take that in multiple ways, I guess. I think this is the one we normally went with the damage in the corner, and we just waited it out. But this time we're going to go on a punching spree, I think. They're very likely to hit me with a 50% bonus. But at the same time, I am continuously leveling up. Okay. I feel like that would have done, like, probably closer to a thousand. 
but we'll just keep going. And the thing is, is that the more Kirk levels, the more it gives Rogue Nine stats, because I know it's been a while, but I'm pretty sure his uh, pupil is Kirk, so their levels actually interact with each other in a fun way. And since Kirk's raw stats have been so good, he's probably assisting Rogue Nine quite a bit here. It's always nice. So it shouldn't take too long to get Kirk back to basically where he was before. He needs to do a little better in terms of base stats. So every time Kirk levels, it's going to check to see what was the highest stat at the time. So we should be good for quite a while. So in a way, I guess we're slowly improving Rogue's 9 resistances and his speed total to some extent. Also health and such, to my knowledge. Just the gun. Use a wind cutter here. So because of the enemy boost, they're not getting one shot, but honestly, kind of entertaining to see our characters just how much they progress where they could survive multiple hits. That definitely would have killed me before. Without a doubt, that would have killed me before. Get the guaranteed kill here. Yeah, so we're slowly at 15. He's probably like 8.5, yeah. Very gradually, they'll become stronger. Rip Rogue 9. I mean, given that it's a level 110 enemy, almost double his level, and it got enemy boosted... I think that's fine. If it took like four or five swings to kill him with that boost, I don't think it matters. And again, both of them will continue to get stronger from the standpoint of, you know, more mana. I could potentially transmigrate if I really want to. Don't really think it's worth doing another pro promotion exam. I was just curious of the status effects just because it had been so long since I played. Like, <laughs> like how much it had fallen off. And the answer is it did fall off pretty hard. In terms of status effects. Oh, is this mid boss? Oh, poor mid boss. I could combine you to get more stats. So bosses do give more experience when merged together. So he might be worth doing that just to level these characters. It's not like I, I mean like there's no way they could kill my 4,000 health character, for example. I just refuse to believe. But honestly, these other characters, it's fine. If I don't merge, it's not the end of the world. Once once we're done with the story mode, there's no point to continuing. So I don't need to be as optimal as we were. Oh, that's awkward. I don't need to be as optimal as we were playing through story mode the first time. Squeezing out every little bit of experience. On the plus side, he is level 100, so that's pretty good XP. Yeah, this is the highest level he's ever been. Wow, he did zero? Oh, that's, that's the armor kicking in for sure. Nicely done. Let's move him up and do a little wind slash here. Or hurricane slash, I mean. Technically, we're also leveling up Laharl a lot. Maybe that's why Laharl's stats are decent. Because uh, Rogue Nine stats went up quite a bit. Yeah, this is an example where more Celestial Armors might assist. Or for the speed score than I. Oh. I mean, if he just dodges every hit, uh, that that was kind of nasty. I'm not even gonna lie, like actually nasty. Hmm. The urge to combine them at least once is pretty high. I'm not gonna lie. I can't believe that guy lived. I'm going to pull them a little closer. I want to see if I can merge them into something. I said it, and then I'm like, you know what? The, the urge to merge them is so strong. I can't resist it. I need another... I guess I could throw a Kirk 
or throw a rope knot here. That barely increases his health at all. What are his stats even? Only 2,000? I mean, he'll probably still one-shot Rogue 9, don't get me wrong, but that's actually not that bad. Hmm. If I diagonal throw here, it could work. That is a awkward diagonal. I have to hit, like, down, left, down, left, down, left, press. There we go. 140,000. Gotta weaken him a little. See how much damage we do here. So we should probably just fill off one of our other characters. But before we do that, we need to soften him a little. Let's have Impar- I mean, the worst thing that happens is like, oh no, Imparameter gets a kill. So we'll get a couple of these characters out. Let's see how much Imparameter does by himself. I'm just curious. Okay. Pretty significant damage production. So now, between Kirk and Rogue Nine, they should get the kill. I'm gonna have Calvisham assist me here. Oh, actually, I already have an assistant. In which case, I'm gonna summon more mages, so that way I can break apart Kirk to get the kill, I think? Like, where are my other mages? There we go. I can lift them up here. And that's the end of the turn. Then if Rogue 9 do like one punch to boost the damage. And then I can also start a big combo chain by Brave Harding repeatedly. So we've seen that our damage is actually decent. But what I can do here is actually, I can get a, uh, what's his name? Uh, RJ Chaos in here. But what I can end up doing is something like... Mm, normal punch. Back attack. Oh, actually, before I do that, I should do, uh... Hmm. How should I do it? I guess I could afford to Braveheart both of them, but then I'm not able to hit them properly. Uh... I mean, I might as well just Braveheart the boss if I can. Oh, I can't. Not worries, position. Okay, let's try this again. So I might as well just Braveheart the boss because it's funny. And I think to maximize our damage... We're going to try to get as many buffs as we can on the boss. Because that way we have a big combo chain. I think that's actually... It sounds really dumb to do, because like if he counterattacks me, I die. But he might kill Rogue Nine. But Kirk will live, and Kirk will have all the buffs. So I think this is fine. So we're now going to have a big combo here. I'm going to do a normal attack. If Rogue Nine takes it, Rogue Nine takes it. Otherwise, this should just be a death with Night Sever. So again, that's 20%, 30%, 40%, 50% more damage. One punch for weakening, and the kill. Nicely done. We'll take that for sure. And hey, we got a decent amount of cash. Wow, imagine getting 3 million in the normal story. I shall shut. My name is... So yeah, that is a big upgrade for us. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So fortunately it shouldn't take too too long. I imagine it'll take like another 30 minutes or so, maybe 40 due to dialogue. But the main story itself should go pretty quickly. Hmm. Isn't this Or actually, you know what, there are a lot of cutscenes. That I might be undercutting it. Maybe 50 is more realistic. And it's mostly just due to this kind of stuff. Where honestly this will take longer than the entire stage. Which is unfortunate. Why what? Why did you do all that? There's only one. Huh? To get that reward. <laughs> At least from the standpoint of us kind of going through and fighting with the human characters, it is interesting to see how much transmigration matters. I know there's a lot of discussions on the forums of like, oh, you should never transmigrate until you're X level. But honestly, in this playthrough and even how we're playing now, it seems like it's always worth doing as when long as you could get at least six feet, points. You faced great day. You pretend to be only to give you the opportunity. That is my like getting getting up to genius rank only makes sense after like your first transmigration. But honestly, on characters like Laharl, we got like nearly fifty percent more stats per attack, and it's not that hard to get back up to level one hundred. You look happy. Yes, 
So I would say, like, early on, if we're playing with just one character, it makes sense to do it at, like, level... Like, honestly, even, like, level 20, level 30. Um, but then after that, you know, it's not as needed. Like, for Imperimeter, it's better for him to have waited for Genius, since since the early benefits have worn off. Damn that flop. It seems that she... Though, arguably, I could have waited on Chris's character to get two more ability points a level. That would have made it a bit more worth it. Got that? But ultimately... In the playthrough, everything succumbs to monsters who don't care about transmigration. <laughs> it's kind of funny how many of the core mechanics just don't matter on monsters in Disgaea 1. It's kind of like that in most of them. But I'll probably be using human characters a lot more in 2, from what I recall. Including actually having a cleric briefly, who we didn't use at all in this playthrough. It's kind of unfortunate that Cure Magic is just not worth using most of the time, just because of the fact that uh, the healing items are cheap. And it also means that I can have an actual high damage character, and basically just use them to heal rather than have a weak character that's susceptible to getting KO'd and lose a character slot. And I think definitely one of the big downsides is, I think until at least Disgaea 4? Might be 5. Definitely by 5 it's true, but maybe as early as 4. Things like Heal and Braveheart don't give experience. So unless they have a re-release of the game that adjusts it, like Disgaea 1 Complete, for example, does that, then it just means that all of your healer characters are just, like, hilariously terribly far behind everything else. There's basically nothing you could do to catch up with them. But it's a big difference between, like, if I Braveheart a level 9,000 character, Across, across the course of, like, 12 maps, I could probably hit, like, low 60s with how it used to work, which is insane. Because that means I actually have a good backup mage, and I don't have to worry about quote-unquote stealing kills. Which I think is definitely better balance, which we'll see in the later Disgaea's. I'm not sure if Disgaea 2 PC offhand fixes that. Probably not, if I had to guess. Also, there's something I want to show when we get back on stream at some point. I forgot we never actually showed off Calvisham's Dark Cannon attack. I want to say it's one of the only games where we could summon it. It's mostly irrelevant. Again, most of their skills are... It's like, it's fine for what it is. Disgaea 1 is like the first in the series. It's not going to be as advanced as the later ones. Like, obviously, they've had years to like refine it play around, experiment, and they do make those upgrades over time, so, sh you know, kudos to them. But isn't that the but yeah, some of the, some of the class abilities are not as immediately obvious, so I feel like from a player satisfaction, like, I know the ninja can dodge, and honestly, I think the first time I played, I just thought his speed was higher than others, and it was a stat I never focused on. So I thought it was more like a stat thing, and it took me a while to go, oh no, wait, the ninja's just actually straight dodging everything. Whereas, like, in later Disgaea's, it's, like, really, 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 really obvious. It'll go, like, this is your passive skill. Here are the skills you get on level up. And you're like, oh, okay. Sort of like how Thief has an enhanced steal ability. Yeah, yeah, we'll go to Jotunheim. Like, some of that was kind of obvious in Disgaea 1, but, like, I, if the other monsters in this game have a passive, I literally have no idea what it is. If, if you were to ask me right now, I don't think I could tell you a single monster's passive, if they even have them, to be honest with you. I think some of the classes have them, but I don't even think all of the classes have them. Like, what does Brawler have as a passive? I have no idea. <laughs> like, does he have counter damage up? I don't know. Like, who knows? It could be anything, honestly, chat silly. Ally damage? Boo. I actually go deal with that. It's in the upper corner, right? Fine, I'll summon in Parameter. Tired of your little nonsense over here. Oh, that is a definitive Omega Star. Have Chris finish them off. That's what they deserve. Beak to fire, then burn. Oh, you actually survived that? What's your resist? Oh, I just got unlucky, I guess. Oh, well. Rick is now level 90, so he's basically caught up to where he was before. That's kind of nice. 
practically at 5,000 attack again. Aharo, I think it was at 29.25 attack, if I remember correctly. So I think Rogue 9 did actually bump him up slightly. We got to see a very small change there. Which is a shame. I mean, like, if we're still using Laharl, he would have been pretty good right now. And to be fair, you know, we did transmigrate him a couple times, so his stats are decent. Just... I guess it's always the eternal struggle between face characters with broken stats, and then characters chat actually cares about. Most people do not care about Laharl in terms of stats. Like, they'll want to just play as themselves. Which is kind of unfortunate, but it's the nature of these kinds of games. Oh, that attack minus 50% is actually really messing me up. It's the one that's over here, right? It's so far away, I don't think I can hit it. Unless I use a parameter to throw Chris, maybe I can hit it then? Their throw range is terrible, but this should work. There we go. Wow. Chris's defense is so high from the armors. He wasn't even getting damaged. That's embarrassing for them. Wow. Celestial armor actually mattering. Proof. Ooh, not quite enough to one shot, unfortunate. Nice kill. But hey, at least we could show that defense matters in this game. I literally probably would have died without having all that defense. So he's at, like, what, a thousand because he's triple stacked armor? Which is kind of funny. Giving Chris another level up. He deserved it. Nice level up there. So we know it was 35 as Laharl's stats. So I'm curious if we check now. What is Laharl's attack power? 36. So basically every level up is a stat point for him. That's not like major gains. But it does add up over time. So it'll continue to focus on whoever has the best stats if he has multiple pupils. But right now I think his only important pupil is uh, Rogue 9. And then Rogue 9 will get powered up by just having Kirk level. So they're kind of synergistic in that sense. Although Kirk got to such a high level that his stats are not likely to go up. Whereas Laharl was only having a level 60-something Rogue 9, so Rogue 9's going into brand new territories of damage never before seen. Wow, 3,000? I think that's his highest attack total we've ever seen by far, not even close. That is so sad, I can't lines roar there. It should work, though. Like, even the damage is starting to fall off a little bit, but hey, everybody's level 100, which is the best possible XP total. I'll take that. Wow, they are so stupid. I will take that for sure. You know what I'm gonna do? It's very unlikely I'm gonna land it, but I might as well just try to have RJ Chaos assist here a little bit. Wait, we could say we used RJ Chaos. And I can bring out a couple other mages if I want to. There's no downside to attempting this. I potentially... Oh, I got confused about that diagonal. So technically, RJ Chaos could be a backup mage, but he needs more Braveheart usage. So just using him a little more in general should keep his playability up. He needs to get to at least like stat 5, I think, for him to be like super, super solid. So he's like halfway there. Ooh, I actually got the attack bonus here. This might actually matter. That is a big level up change. That is so good for us. Perfect. Probably gonna lose a mage here. Oh, RJ Chaos actually took multiple hits there. Good job, RJ Chaos. Waste the enemy's turns. We can get a nice Omega Fire here. Level Chris's uh, proficiency up. Almost at 14. Parameter's almost at 14 as well. I think I could Hurricane Slice him from here. Yeah, that's kind of nasty. So yeah, there we go. So just a little bit of Braveheart, and they're looking pretty good. 
Ooh, that extra damage on the follow-up there kind of sucks for us. Whatever. Ooh, didn't kill. But hey, this is where Chris can clean it up. Mega star time. So he'll have little bits of bonus SP for the bonus stage. Not that I think it super matters here. Don't need to worry about that. Hey, at least we're almost done with the episode. So it's nice to have the human characters basically back to where they were before the transmigration. And honestly, with all the attacks, the only thing I kind of miss out on is just losing a bit of the weapon proficiency. It sucks that you can never have 100% restored, so it's like it forces you to grind if you want to get back to exactly where you were. But at the same time... Oh, invincibility. I remember when I used to merge these characters together. So this would have been the alternative. I guess it, this part I should have talked about on stream. But I think when I was starting out really early on, I think I just passed like all the monster bills and just merged them into like an 800 or so. Just because you can't die, you should eventually win. Because we can't die, I might as well just have Rogue Nine come in. Have an attack war with these characters. Um... This area is super good for proficiency. I guess the question is... Is there a way to get past them without throwing? I don't think there is. But I probably want... Oh, you know what I... Oh, that's what I did last time. I would, like, lift a character and then throw them. That's right. As I was gonna say, I know there's a way to definitely clear this. So basically what I want to do to build proficiency... It's just constantly attack them and provoke attack counterattacks. Because every single counterattack that lands, I believe, adds proficiency. So this is fine. We could go into a counter, 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 counter war. That should build up a lot of meter. So if I want Rogue Nine to be a little better. Because he's not quite one-shotting, that's all I gotta do. Them hitting me like that is kind of annoying. What I can also do is use a little bit of RJ Chaos here. So we know he can't die. So I might as well improve his proficiencies here. So if we could get him into like a line boost, that means I kind of have three attackers on fail. So in case I lose a mage, I have a backup. And then even in general, having potentially multiple mages. So like if I have... I can have five people doing Braveheart and one doing Magic Boost, and then I can flip it a little bit, so that way I free up a uh, Magic Booster to do damage. There's like a lot of little things I can do to improve it. Here we go. We're almost at the point where I can start having a war with them. This will make up for not using Rogue 9 as much. Yeah, see he had rank 9 off of that. Beautiful. So that's just another 5% to his stats. And considering God Hand has 1,000, that's not insignificant. I could also combine them into one enemy for super experience, which I've also done before. For example, I just do something like this. But as I said before, as long as they're over 100, it shouldn't really matter if I merge them or not. Yeah, so hitting rank 9 there, kind of good. So we're a little above 3k attack power, which is not too bad. Braveheart finally got a triple area. That must mean that I hit proficiency 3. Indeed I did. Yeah, kind of nice. So we're improving usability. The only thing we need to do now is use magic boost a bit more with RJ Chaos. So that way we can at least have two primary attackers, which will probably be Chris. Plus a parameter for damage, and the others will just maintain buffs on everybody. I think makes sense. We'll do one more Braveheart, and then I'm just gonna slowly make my way to making the other characters not invincible anymore. Nice. That's just very gradually going up.
So we're making RJ Chaos more viable. So the extra range matters, the AoE matters. This counter attack there. But now we have triples. That's pretty good. I can have up to four fighters. Now I just need to improve magic boost just a little bit, and I think we're good to go. Next turn I should be able to throw and do damage. In the meantime, I'll just punch for meter. This will take a while because I'm doing it slow, but that's fine. I get to amuse myself with meter. Technically, if I want to get one of the classes, I could try to get gun proficiency 25. But unless I'm seriously at, like, max arm master, I don't really feel like it's worth the time to unlock the character. By that point, I should already have everything I need. In fact, we already have everything I need. So it's like, in theory, if I were to never use a monster, yes, it could be fun, but... I don't think it matters. Long run whatsoever. So we got magic boost a little stronger. Nicely done. Put a character in the way. I could put Laharl down. We haven't used him at all. Oh, he's not high enough level to get the other ability. Oh, that's awkward. I went to do Meteor Strike, and I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Where is it? Okay, I can soften him up a little, I guess. His number of counters is pretty high, so at least it should go pretty quick if they counterattack were him. Uh, so what I can do is move over here, probably do a Lion's Roar. Oh, I can. It's a bird. Hmm. Tiger Strike you, then. Let's use Magic Boost on the Harl. Not that it'll help his damage. More just to build up more meter. Maybe we had staff proficiency wise, three and a half, not bad. This should be GG for these other enemies. Kirk is almost back at the same level he was before. Basically, I just got a free S rank proficiency, which does make a difference. Going from A to S, I'm like, even if I lost a little bit, we're back to where we were before, but faster. So he's extremely tanky. Do some damage there. Magic boost is now three people, which is perfect. So now at this point, I just need to buff up, I guess. There we go, RJ Chaos. Finally holding his own. Took a while, but we got there in the end. I definitely feel cheated by Etna Mode not having more stat ups. It was pretty BS, honestly, for Etna Mode to just. or not status ups. Etna Mode to not have more uh, bonus rank. It being at like 15 made no sense with how hard those enemies were. They should have been like Cave of Ordeals level at the end, kind of drops to make it worth it. But that is perfect. Nine and a half proficiency. With this, magic boost is that. Brave Heart's probably more important, so we'll focus on that, and then this should be GG. Here we go. I'm just immediately gonna go into the next area. Oh, there's another boss here. Not that it matters at all. And again, if we really need levels, we could combine. I don't think I want to combine this one. I think it would just take too long. I think what I do want to do is use Rogue 9 a bit more. I want to have Parameter come out, Chris come out, and in the middle I'm going to put RJ Chaos, who should now be able to AoE this way, which is actually important. And I can slowly buff their staff proficiencies. I mean, they're pretty good right now, but it could be better. This should do some insane damage. Yeah. Rogue 9 is a little injured, but no point in healing up. I'm gonna go in. Nicely done. 
So again, he's higher level than he's ever been before. Nice dodges. Actually, super clutch dodges. Line these characters up. Oh, line these characters up. Get it out. This is where being... Oh, it's like slightly too short. This is where having more proficiency matters, because having to reposition them wastes time. Whereas I could do stuff like this. Other stats should be absolutely fantastic. Oh, did I block where he was supposed to go? That was bad of me, actually. Carl's at 3064? Did he level or something in the other stage and I didn't notice? That's... He was at 36, I think we said before. Huh. Yeah, there we go. Oh, I think that actually worked. Yeah, they're slowly building enough mana to maybe make more characters if I want them to. Like, Kirk having somebody under him could be useful. His only pupil right now is Calvisham, who doesn't add, like, a ton of stats to him. But having more accuracy up on a fighter doesn't hurt, I suppose. So we're almost all the way at 10. At this point, I think it's basically GG. Just gonna keep using Braveheart to get more range. And I hope that the accuracy of Chris and Imperimeter are good enough to hit the Ninja Friend, but probably aren't. Well, he seems to be working, I guess. So once Kirk breaks 10,000, we'll know he's basically back to where he should be. Now this time with S rank proficiency for faster meter game to make up for the 5% he lost earlier. Now we can probably do something like this. Do Night Sever into a Tiger Charge. Nice kill, gave it to Rogue 9. Excellent. Please. What should I Forgive me, oh must Killing a lose you? Yeah, I will return. So episode 9 I know is guaranteed to give us a new thing for the next session. So at minimum we're more than halfway there because we're entering episode 6. But But I don't mind a true demon is as king. Listen up. I'm gonna work. Uh-uh. I'll be watching your NX. Hmm, you can take <laughs> that stream Maharl and e I don't understand it. But <laughs> I'm trying to see what exact episode Gordon joins, because I honestly don't remember. I remember the plot of it, but I don't remember where it is in the story. Imagine we're getting close. Hey wait! Everyone! Oh, they're actually also chapter nine. I guess that works. Hi everybody! I'm Etna. I'm a first grader at Netherworld. We're nearly there. So I think it might be the transition of episode nine into episode ten, which is fine. And then I can make a decision later if I really want to complete the bonus stage. I mean at least that point it's only four episodes away. Versus needing to do eight. So I'll probably make the stream at least sit through that. Wanna touch you? Next on Evolutionary Magical Girl Etna, Episode 6. Curse you, Flawed! Get ready to be spellbound! Aren't you embarrassed to say something like that? Not at all. There we go. Already starting episode 6 is a good sign. Dear sirs and madams, I hope these dark days find you well. However, I, Laharl, am deeply concerned with the state of the Netherworld. I am well aware that unnecessary bloodshed is not your desire. Therefore, I am writing to propose a formal challenge. An event with my father's title at stake. The title of Overlord. 
The rules are simple. On Curse Day, in the month of the Adder, I shall journey to the heart mm -hmm. of evil, carrying with me the official deed. The one who rests the deed from my hand shall be recognized as the new overlord. In the event that I reach my destination still in possession of the deed, I shall assume the position myself. To those with great ambition, I encourage you to participate. Sincerely, Prince Lahar. What do you think? Yes! Yeah, one thing I think is That's a little right. disappointing with I've some of the characters the is, uh, I think they do a better job at making the attributes a bit more interesting Are across the board in the later that? disguises. So, huh? it's a bit unfortunate, like, for example, the Harl is just 100 in every stat, but, like, there's no way to improve it, and even the base stats aren't that interesting. But we'll see in the later ones, they'll start off with, like, 110% or 120 towards stuff, and then you can naturally raise them through grinding. Not that I plan on grinding in those games. But I, I just think it's more interesting, at least from the story perspective. Because it is kind of weird that basically the story characters are absolute garbage in this game, outside of, like, Laharl. Just because of the fact that, like, they just... Once you get something like a Majin that has, like, 120 to all stats, there's just literally no reason to ever use the story characters. Like, their special skill is not better than 20% of a stat at that point. It's just too much of a difference to overcome and a lot of the monsters are also kind of boring since they are also very similar in attributes some of them are a bit more unique but as i said before it's just kind of like one of those things where they eventually find their footing with monsters and how it should balance versus human characters no more awkward uh pretty only con conversions for example that are in this game that are not in the later ones although actually funny enough we're coming up to the story mode stage we're supposed to lose on. If we did this in Disgaea 2, we would get an ending. I don't think we get anything special in Disgaea 1. Do you know what, in hindsight, I'm really glad I decided to uh, do this because I forgot there was something that is technically different. So maybe we'll see a new cutscene? I mean, there's no way I'm losing with my 9,000s. Even, even with everything buffed and them being potentially 9,999, I still think I'll be fun. Uh, let's have our day chaos come in here. There we go. Almost at rank 4, which is important. For more range and or area, I'll take either. Here... How's his attack power? His attack power actually got hit once, so somebody managed to get through to him. Get a nice little easy kill there. Probably just normal attack here. Get it? Oh, or don't get a combo attack. Thanks, game. 80% is a lie. What an absolute fib it was to me. Our mage is probably dead. Oh, at least RJ Chaos actually survived. Good job, RJ Chaos. So what we can do is definitely guarantee a kill 99% this time, or whatever, right? Right? Whatever. And we can... Oh, can't test it out ahead of time. We can Slayer should work here. That should be a lot of levels for him. Nice. Eventually, I could remove the 5k health buff, but honestly, right now, kind of good. So maybe if I want to, I could replace it with a Celestial Armor, just to get a little more overall stats. More importantly, Resistance. Right now, he could just kind of slap everything from existence. I guess this works. We'll revive RJ Chaos. Nicely done. I guess I could turn off the chat and really think about it, because we technically did end the stream earlier. Let me uh, do that. There we go. Just YouTube chat and I today. done. And because Kirk is so tanky, I think we're adding defense, which is kind of needed for the ninja to survive. It's kind of funny. That is a massive AoE clear. 
were so good for us. What are they doing on proficiencies, by the way? Oh, hit 14 on Chris. We have a plus three range, plus three area. So we can see Braveheart. I can target them from here. It's completely insane. I just need a Parameter to... Oh, Parameter also hit it at the same time. Well then, I mean, that's... That is some long distance buffs. So if things go really, really awry, we should be fine. I'm going to move up a little so I have more targets for them. So yeah, maybe I'll... Maybe it's not needed for the run, but maybe I'll get another one just for Kirk. Get rid of his 5,000 health for more stats. Because he is able to tank basically everything. Maybe he doesn't need the health up right now anymore. I don't want to Night Sever myself. That'd be awkward. But Kirk is like within 15 levels, I think, of where he was before. Not too bad. Now this begs the question, what's Laharl's stat at? Yeah, he's at 3070, so he's gaining like several uh, several attack points a level. So it is actually visibly adding up. So if we were playing the game normally, that would have been pretty huge actually. Going up almost like 150 attack is just basically like having a free item at this point. But obviously, it means nothing compared to our 9,000-something monsters. Also, this is going to drive me wild. I don't like that new characters are added at the bottom due to how we do our menus. I just don't even want to see this character. Let's put these two together. So yeah, I don't have to do this, but I think I'm going to do it just for Kirk's character. I don't think I need another armor up. If I see a 252 in here, I'll buy it. The uh, other monster. The Falcon shoes. It's like so close. Come on. There's a resistance up. Maybe this is good enough. Some more Falcon boots, which is huge. I don't think I need anything else here. Infernal Shield having a lot of in is kind of insane. Wait a minute. I didn't even look at this item before. Wait a minute. Wait, I could just actually unironically buy that for the mages? That's actually ridiculous defense. Or shoes are here. Huh. I should have checked that out earlier. I guess it didn't always appear in my defense. I mean, anything that keeps Chris alive longer, or the equivalency thereof. Huh. Yeah, it's just 150 int by itself. Okay. I mean, this should help extremely well with survival. Then I can make RJ Chaos tankier. It'll be easier to keep him around. Then Chris's character can technically get more in over the Celestials. All these are a step down in terms of int. How about this one? Ooh, I can actually gain int. Huh. I think that's worth it. I barely lose resistance. Almost double my defense. I lose a little bit of hit, but I get more in. I think that matters more. Ah. I don't know what's happening there. I feel like sometimes... Something about the Disgaea controls are, like, ultra touchy. Like, I wasn't touching anything there, and it just started doing stuff again. Weird. I don't know what happened to the thing that I just had a moment ago. It got dumped into the ether. I lose defense, but I gain int. It's probably worth it. So technically, we make Chris's defense go down, but I think ultimately, still have some pretty good items. I don't think I need any of these. That means I can basically... I do lose hit, which is kind of annoying to hit the uh, ninja. I think everything else is just free. 
Like, there's no reason for Try to be using this, for example. The minimum we could bring up Try stats a little bit. Better than nothing. And the and again, the extra hit means he's more likely to land the buffs. I think at this point. Well, that also means I could technically get more hit. Oh no no no, glasses are still better. That's fine. Um, I don't think I need these. I could lose a little bit of attack to get way more defense, which I think matters more for us at this point. Yeah, that matters way more. A little extra health resistance and 2300 means that we're pretty much unkillable. Ooh. I think actually just becoming tankier matters here. I think I'd rather have the 700 attack, to be honest. Can I get one more Infernal for in this case? Just want to check. I mean, I might as well just push our characters to the limits. I'm here. Can we get it s something a little better than that, please? Ooh, Arm Master. That's actually huge. I will take that over a majority of the things that we have. 332 attack. Sure, I'll take one of those. And one last upgrade, maybe a Celestial. Let's do this. Actually, that speed up might matter for Rogue Nine, because I basically only care about his speed going up a little more. I lose a little bit of speed. Or I can lose a little bit of hit, but gain more stats. Okay. I mean, I lose int, which doesn't matter. Losing SP kind of sucks. But honestly, another 16 resistance. And my attack power is basically back to where it was before. How are they all within one level of each other? That is such a tease. That is actually such a tease. Can we talk about that? That's not okay. I think at this point, I probably just want our master on Kirk, because he already is statistician. So he's already extremely tanky. He loses a lot of health, but I think more importantly, his defense is insanely high, despite having the bell on. None of these other things I think are worth equipping. Frost could probably use an upgrade. More SP is never a downside. Oh, this oh his his weapon matches his blood orb. I was like, why am I losing stats? I was like, damn. Kind of unfortunate. <laughs> I might as well just get her some of these items, because I don't think it matters. One thing I want to make sure that we do... I want to make sure our remaining ninjas, for whatever I got, get upgraded to Falcon Shoes. I don't care what the ranks are. As long as they get upgraded, I think I'm fine. to move somewhere. We have enough movement. What I could do with these remaining movements is for our cat characters. Make sure that some of them have some movement. This character, for example, can make a big difference. If I really just need a 9 movement character, we could go ahead with it. Otherwise, I don't think their stats matter, because I think everybody else is basically good to go. We have so many Infernals, but I don't think I got any interesting stats otherwise. So that means I have a 5,000 health I could put on somebody. I could just do this. Or to make them basically unkillable. Not a bad idea. Oh. See, that's what I'm talking about again. I didn't touch anything, and it was just, like, ultra-sensitive. 
It's only this game I've noticed it, where it just kind of does whatever it wants. Alright, so we have a lot of... P32 attack is so high. Um... Does that matter for final characters? I am taking a little bit too long here. I'll try to speed this up. I don't think I need any of these here. It doesn't hurt to have the 65k character with the upgrade, I guess. Again, it just kind of canceled my menu there. That was weird. I was not done. Yeah, like, is it really worth that many stats? I don't think so. I think I'd just rather have the resist at this point. Yeah, like, Shaolin Bell is actually pretty good, but everything else is just kind of whatever. If I'm really desperate, I'll use these characters. But I might as well just slightly upgrade them. Do we have future belts if I really need them? I do have a super sword still. Let me sell the rest of these items. And now I don't have a reason to really do it again, unless I really just want to finish up my boots. Which I think at this point, we have enough characters with enough movement that it shouldn't matter. Okay, like, these are sellable. The 320 is worth using. I was gonna say, one of them had my broker. I'm gonna make sure not to sell that in case I need to story loop or something. Star Warp doesn't matter. Could do a rosary on one of these characters. Sure, why not? Sure, we'll give it to this character. Who cares? So we still have a hilarious amount of cash, but this time Kirk's defense is actually pretty good. Somehow the ninja has more, which is kind of funny to me, because Kirk has the bravery belt on. Which, by the way, only 363. Wait a minute, was that other one actually worth upgrading on Kirk? Didn't even check. Oh, it's like slightly less. Yeah, whatever. Alright, so let's save to make sure we don't accidentally activate any dialogue and miss it. I think we should be good here. Oh, let's not do that. <laughs> I love how the bonus rank on the map is 56, by the way. Like, okay. 35 on that one. 50 on the others. Interesting. This is just the boss fight. What I can end up doing is taking Kirk out. Bring out Rogue 9. His attack power is basically the same, but I've way improved his base defense by like nearly doubling it. Even his resistance went up another 100 points, and his speed is still basically the same at the end of the day. So I feel like not worth. RJ Chaos is now much tankier. Good for us. I'm less likely to hit the ninja now with our buffs, which does suck. But we're not relying on Rope 9 for damage. I mean, if it happens, it happens. Oh yeah, that did like literally nothing. So I think it'd be better for the enemy to do six rather than it being able to do several hundred damage. None of these items really matter. Let's go ahead and pray hard again so we can get better range. The fact that we can hit that far is insane to me. I love that I can buff up to nine fighters. I really want to. That'll never happen, but it's amusing to see. Do something like this. Oh, I think he did actually get leveled up there with Braveheart. Nice. Next area for sure. Oh, here's the Prinnies we could kill. Like, the only time we fight Prinnies so far. The Kirk is basically back to the same level he was before. Ooh, they actually survived. They are level 120, to be fair, and we're fighting with a level 60 character. Oh, you're super dead. Mistakes. We're made. And now, with our high defense, we're not taking any damage. So at least we get to see the difference of defense, if nothing else. I could also throw these characters. But, let's actually get some kills. That's a back attack, and it's still missed. 
Nicely done. Really great stat. Ooh, that proficiency up to 10. I think almost added 100 attack by itself. It's honestly 3100 on a ninja. Not bad. Rick's almost back up to 5k. And he still has another 10 levels or so to go. That would put him at 5k just by leveling, I think, 10 times. Or 12, depending on rounding. So yeah, let's just finish him off, I guess. <laughs> Rick's just going around going, bop, 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 dead. Wait, there's another enemy? Oh, is it like over here? Wait, where are they? <sighs> that is so evil. I mean, fortunately, I'm not like low level. But if I died to that, I'd be so mad. Literally off screen. Nice level up. Again, this adding more defense and more and more defense to Kerr. Here we go. Here's the one where I'm curious. What level are they right now? They're only 415. I honestly think I could just beat this. I mean, well, I mean, definitely could beat it with this. Yeah, let's just bring in our melee characters. Who cares? This is like the only time I'm going to whip these characters out, so might as well just use them. We could take advantage of, uh... I guess... Five characters to speed this up. We have five mages with five buffs. Although one of our buffs will not hit the other characters, which is fine. Frost here, and parameters here. This is here. The chaos is here. Ooh, he actually got the he got the he got the exact one he needed to unlock for this exact scenario. Thank you, RJ Chaos saves me a big headache of figuring out who doesn't get buffed. I'm trying to remember to hold down the skill button in between because it feels so dangerous to do that. Just from the standpoint that you hit confirm to place where the skill is done, but I hold confirm in order to fast move the mouse. It's not a great feeling. Also, the damage is actually bonkers. Goodbye. 142,000, nice. So at this point, our defenses are actually like really high in general. Not even sure if they can hurt most of our characters as is. We'll see what they do. I'm seeing zeros. Wow. We we are just that statted right now. Holy. Honestly insane. I mean, they couldn't even hit our 7,000, let alone our other character. I mean, this would normally be a difficult fight. Obviously, you're not meant to win it, but when you have stuff like this... I mean, I'm still one-shotting them with one of our debuffs- with one of our buffs falling off. It's kind of insane. So anyway, if we need mana for anything later, we have a lot of characters to choose from. Oh, so you don't even do the refight at all. Interesting. Okay. That's kind of a shame. I guess that's why they changed in the later Disgaea games that you get something out of it, like an extra cutscene. We don't even... Because I, I would have let it record and been like, oh, okay, this is the one part that's worth watching, but in terms of a uh, story, unfortunate. Well, we're almost there, I guess. The random morphs. I'm just gonna bring a, a like our max level character here. Just this kind of level just feels like it'll take forever if I don't try to take it seriously. I mean, on the plus side, the more care. Ooh, ninja's base movement actually important here. The fact that he's at 7 without any boots is kind of crazy. That is useful. Sadly, he doesn't do enough damage to one shot. But hey, maybe they normal attack him. Or Prism Red. Yeah, sadly I saw Disguise 1 Complete also makes Prism Red playable. 
don't really get that opportunity in the <laughs> main game, which is definitely an oversight, I would say. King of Beasts. Oh, let's see what this looks like. We finally have a boss kill move with Fist. But it's still not quite strong enough. At this point, it's just bonk. I just hope our raw attack power one shots. Kirk has enough attack power. Ninja sadly doesn't. Just because he didn't have a good level up before the previous one. If we were to transmigrate him again, I think he'd be able to do it. Just because he transmigrated with only, I think, like 8 points instead of 16. Which is kind of a big jump in between. Ooh, I got poison. That's kind of annoying. Alright, we'll do what we can here. You. This low movement actually he's trolled me there. Yes, they are hurting us with bomb magic. I think is in. So funny enough, we are getting hit by the ghost damage. The other damage doesn't matter at all. Ooh, double counter attack is huge. Oh, and I can stop the warps now. Is anybody in an awkward place? I can't deal with them. Nope. Nope. Okay, good. And this. Really? Wait, it did 5k health? Holy, never mind. I was <laughs> just like, wow, that is. Is that tankier than the enemies we're fighting? What the heck? Yeah, why does that have so much health? Why, though? <laughs> why, why does it have 50% more health than the enemies we're fighting? That's kind of messed up. I'm sadly gonna get poisoned to death here. There's not much I could do about that. Oh, that's our ally. Oh, that I think that means I can throw him then. Oh, I can't move. It's so awkward. I guess I can declare myself to live longer. Got no other purpose for it. That's so annoying. This level sucks. I'm not gonna lie. This level is just a horrible gimmick. I hate everything it stands for. It's terrible. It's like, it wastes so much time. Oh, man. Okay, let's see. Let's get... Kristen here to get a kill, I guess. And getting a couple more level ups wouldn't hurt. There's one enemy left. Oh man, this is gonna take forever. At least Chris should hopefully be able to snipe him wherever he goes. Where's the enemy? Oh, okay. Oh, uh, I don't think this is gonna kill. Try though. That's not going to kill. Too far. Unfortunate. Oh, if that was just a normal melee, that would have been huge. Um, you know what? I think I'll give this one to Chris as well. He needs to catch up a little on level ups. Mostly for SP reasons. So we are making our way through. We did lose a lot of time going through the shop, I'm not gonna lie, that was definitely my fault. But hey, I was just curious. It did make a difference, like now I'm not dying as frequently. Another mid-boss battle. I remember this stage, because we combined them all into one super enemy. But honestly, I think it matters here. What is the Harl stats at? 30-40? down a little from our other stats. It's like just slightly too weak now. See like 4,000 is basically perfect but like anything less than that is too weak. Yeah. But like Wind Cutter would kill there but Blade Rush doesn't because it doesn't have a good enough multiplier. On the plus side though, unless they start poisoning, they are really not injuring us at all. Just don't poison kill your own ally. They did. Uh, of course they did. Fortunate. And thanks to Arm Master, Kirk's proficiency should go up pretty fast at this rate. We'll, t we'll take it like a 34% increase equivalency. 
Wow, he's still dodging almost every hit. That's kind of crazy. Ooh, that did massive damage to us. Why did that do so much damage? What was the difference in attack power? I guess maybe the combo was just so long. I don't feel like anything in there was like particularly overwhelming. I think we're gonna... Actually, Plubber is just gonna kill with one of our mages. Go with Dicros again. Alright, are these enemies? Doing Parameter. He did up just a little teeny bit. There we go. And again, that's more SP for them. They'll probably not survive a single Uber boss. But hey, they might survive Item World. We get that spread. Kill. Got confused, so I can't cast spells. That is actually incredibly irritating. Huh. Sadly, I'm probably going to have to use another character to get some kills here. I guess I could try to give it to Laharl. Overlord's Wrath here. Picking ah. him up a little. Oh, that damage is terrible. Yeah, the poison sadly is gonna kill most of my allies here. Not much I can do about it. That did like legit zero damage. That was just kind of embarrassing, honestly. Might as well just buffer our stats a little more. Good matter. I could do Hurricane Slash for damage. Freaking height problem. Game please. Lightsaver, and then do King of Beasts for kill, maybe? Nice. Barely did it, but it works. Say so Rogue Nine's levels actually matter. Because I don't think we would have killed without him being at least level 60. Plus extra stats to Laharl held. Consider yourself water. So close. So we have two more away. episodes to go. These excuses are Huh? That me. I'm the overlord. Hmm. The sup? <laughs> Look at him. He pretends to be. You think? Wait. Like... Anyway, shouldn't Huh? You help the print. Uh yeah, sadly the mages were not created with each other, so for example, Chris leveling doesn't impact a parameter. At least not to my knowledge. But their levels are unfortunately not very synergistic. That's also kind of the problem with Disgaea in general, is that it's like, if you have a character that gets the kills, but then you want to help the other characters get kills, there's kind of an awkward moment where in order to get initial momentum, you have to make the characters with somebody else. So it's like as neat it would, as it would be for Laharl to learn Braveheart, it doesn't really matter. Since he's not going to be using his staff. I mean, technically Overlord! I could make him wield Overlord! a staff. Overlord! But probably not worth it. Okay. The two more episodes to go. I think we're done. The evil Empress Edna has sent yeah, I, I did lose like 20 minutes in the shop, sadly. <laughs> but it's whatever. I imagine we'll be wrapping up soon-ish. So there's no other things I need to do other than, I guess, complete the stages and do safety saves. It's not entirely clear to me if it's the start of episode 9. It might be the end of episode 9 we have to reach. Or at least part of episode 9, because we don't get Gordon right away. But I don't think we get him at literally the end either. But I could be mistaken. Call me your highness. Aw, 
not. Come on. Mine. Like we definitely get Jennifer first. You want me to make it rain? I just don't remember if Gordon was last or if we fight the other hero first. Come in, Aaron. Who's this? Oh, I could I could steal the ultimate item if I want to. Now, now. Jennifer Black. What? In times like this. Hey, does she have a few? Huh. You got just like you. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Huh? And your job? Why would I be ridiculous? Bring me something more. I repeat. It may seem ridiculous. This is a perfect way. And if you don't do, what, what, what are you getting? Answer me. Blah blah blah. Oh. Come on. Good. And you. Oh. Why am I? I swear I'm mashing. Still so much dialogue I can't skip. Episode 7 of Being an Overlord. We'll get there eventually, though. As long as I don't miss any dialogue about unlocking characters, it's fine. Getting to at least Episode 9 means that I get one more area to show off, so even if something is wrong and I have to actually complete all of Episode 9, at least I'll be at the standpoint where, hey, I get another bonus thing to do with the stream later. We know about the flood of zombies. So at least we got through most of this. That is a big AoE. Oh yeah, it's all the XP up here. Hmm. But I don't have to combine them as I mentioned before. But I think what I will do is get Kirk out. Get Rogue Nine out. And also get Laharl. We haven't used him in forever. It is a shame that Laharl by himself does not add stats to anybody. It is what it is, I guess. We'll just bring out our mages. If they die, they die. I don't really care. Now we have a spare mage. Ooh, yeah, that's so good now. Thank you, Chaos. Now with the attack buffs, it should be pretty huge. Yeah, the downside is dodging all of those brave hearts means that we're probably not going to one-shot with most of these characters. But we tried. Massive kill. So he's only seven levels away from where he capped before. And most notice, mo notably, his stats are really high compared to Edna Mode. It's very nice. The lines roar this. Oh, just, if he got one more buff, that would have killed. So sad. I love how he can use all of the spells from our mages. Ooh, not enough to kill there. It's fine, we should be able to get some kills overall. And honestly, most of our mages are tanky due to how I statted them up. So, like, they will take multiple hits to kill. Oh, I can't move from my current position. That's kind of annoying. Let's use Blaze Knuckle. Even if they're resistant, it should kill. Go ahead and use Lion's Roar. Multi-kill. Go ahead and use Wing Cutter. Or actually, Wing Slayer might be better if I can line it up. Oh, I can't move him. Uh... Yes, Night Sever's fine then. Ooh, wow, I'm doing, like, no damage. Oh, I guess I'm also not statted up, to be fair. They're both weak to ice. Interesting. I'll try to give Chris a kill if he survives. We're unfortunately gonna have to go back to the hospital. On the plus side, though, that extra defense did pay off. Not a single mage has died. At least not now. One of them just died due to poison. Made me a liar right at the last second. Nice kill for Imperameter. We're definitely going to Lion's Roar to... Ooh, we can't. I'm going to King of Beasts then, this character. 
Token I will level. Carl will level off of this. If I do need him for something later. He almost has his other ability unlocked. I think he needs to hit 54. If I remember correctly. Otherwise, nicely done. Set area is not bad before you get to, like, Cave of Ordeals, because clearing that other Cave of Ordeals is very difficult without having super equipment. So, like, I would have to grind out, like, Kirk's weapon to be at, like, 3,000 plus in order to potentially one-shot things in Cave of Ordeals. So it's not like it's impossible, I just don't see- I don't see it as worth my time. So Rogue Nine did get more stats. Laharl went up almost 100 attacks, so as I said before, we could see it kind of paying off in real time. I think Laharl has gotten almost 150 while we've been playing today. So on top of that, his other stats are getting a little better, like his speed is hit, well, his hit to some extent. You know, just little things to make him a bit better. But anyway, let's focus on the clears. I am kind of curious when we're done with all of this. That's not the right one. Whether or not we have enough to transmigrate again. I imagine we would with the boost. Oh, enemy boost is kind of annoying. Um. I think we did this before. If we throw this, I think it damages everybody. But it more importantly gets rid of the triple boost. I think we're at the point where I can't afford a triple boost. Since they are decently high level. So if I want to give the kills to other people, I need to move. And that weakening them definitely is kind of nice. That locking me in place is kind of mind-boggling. I don't remember if it's like that in the other games. You have to physically wait for the bonus meter to fill up. Or if they realize people don't want to do that. So strong. Goodbye, Etna. They're ultra dead. Yeah, they're doing like 70 to our 2000 health. I think that armor was absolutely worth it. Sadly, our sword user is unable to really do anything, but Lion's Roar is still usable here. I could get an easy triple kill. I don't have a good AoE, which kind of sucks. On uh, the plus side, Kirk is now at 16. Are you at 11 yet? No, you're still pretty far. Okay, we need to get potentially an Arm Master onto Rogue 9 if I want to improve him before the end. But don't think it's going to happen because I'm not going to go to the shop. But hey, at least Kirk is basically as good as he's going to get. Because that's also the thing, too, you have to realize. Like, if, I, if he had, like, 30 or 40% more stats, he would be at 3,700 attack. So honestly, in terms of stats, he's probably not that far off from Kirk. It's more just the weapon has 200 more base attack, and he gets, like, literally 40% more from it. So, it's making it look like the ninja is weak, but it's more that Kirk is overpowered, since we put so much time leveling his weapon proficiency. Which will continue to go up, thanks to Arm Master. And being paralyzed here really sucks. I can't really clear these out quickly. Dodge. Am I finally not poisoned? Okay, I'm finally not poisoned. Yeah, that's a huge level up for me. I'm gonna use Night Sever on you, so that way the ninja might only have to kill the one that's like this. Ooh, counterattack? Nice. This also wastes a little bit of time using. Now it's wasting a little bit of time to use the human characters. Before, not really, but spending time upgrading, a little bit of time. We'll get there eventually. Oh, is this the cannot cross damage silence? Yeah. Um. 
Honestly, it's more the... No entry, that's a problem. So I think at this point I'm just gonna throw one of our super characters with movement. Which one of them had like nine movement? Might actually be relevant. Hopefully this does it. Oh, just a little weak, damn. Unfortunately, we'll end our turn here. Get these other characters away, because I don't need them anymore. I think I won't use RJ Chaos for now. Just have the characters move over here. That extra movement speed matters. That's also kind of the thing that helps too, is I think Kirk's general jump height also improved. So his ability to just clear the map is better. So even though he didn't gain like any super movement, his base movement going up a little bit is helpful. Okay, I can finally come over here. And probably Lion's Roar. Which is proving useful. What I can do is just bop you. If I need to speed it up, I have a third character over here. Nicely done. Miss. Miss. Perfect. Do another Lion's Roar. I might die to the damage 20% being paralyzed. That's also kind of why I uh, brought the other character. In fact, this is the exact scenario I was hoping they would do. Let's go ahead and Mystic Blast these. Didn't quite get the kill. What a shame. Kirk might die here. Oh, unless he counterattacks. Nice. That's one way to save her. Oh, he took damage anyway at the end of turn. Wait, is it possible to kill and then game over there? Wait a minute. Doesn't that introduce a soft lock? If I take damage after the battle ends, isn't that a soft lock? Because I could just die. That doesn't feel like that was thought through if that's allowed to happen. I'll be real honest with you. I'm like, wait a minute. Because <laughs> if you have nobody left, you should just game over. So I wonder if it just game overs you instead of make making you win. If so, that's kind of brutal. Ooh, didn't quite get the kill. Let's give it to Rogue Nun. You can see his damage is falling off, even though it's still pretty good, as I said before. His weapon proficiency going up is where he's going to see the most stat increases. Nice dodge, nice dodge. Even with 20% more, he barely injured us. Characters are in the way. Now the zombies are just getting kind of annoying to deal with. They're not hard, it's just more like, if they lock my movement down, it just takes longer than it should. I mean, on the plus side, this the dodges are mostly working. I just wish I had somewhere I could teleport. I think what I'll do is I'll lift you, just so I can Lion's Roar. That saves a lot of time. Yeah. And from here, we'll do Night Sever. Ooh. Interesting. Nice dodges. So many attacks hitting us there. I'm glad they broke up our combo. I probably would have died from that normally. But we'll take what we can. If I can here, I'd like to kill these two with magic. A shame we didn't have Calvisha with more levels, because that would help Kirk out a little bit. 
Might as well summon these two. They're both weak to ice, so I'll start with Chris. Nice, both of them got levels. More SP for the future. I'm not gonna say no to that for sure. Aw, Chris died. Rip Chris. Hit revenge and parameter. Finish them. Can I still not move at all? This is so annoying. Alright, let's summon the Harl again. We should be able to clean things up here, even if I can't move. Oh, or, uh... So I guess zombies naturally poison with their attacks. I guess maybe that's their passive. I would like to use ice here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make Laharl come in, hit on the attack bonus, and if he doesn't kill, what we'll do is we will... Mega ice this character. Nicely done. The parameter basically back at where he was before, because I don't think he was at a hundred. Oh, maybe he was literally at a hundred. Oh yeah, I think that's right. I think he was literally at a hundred, so he's almost back to where he was. Almost at a solid four thousand int. Yeah, at this point, transmigrating is not super helpful. In fact, I don't even think the last one was all that great, to be honest. I could have made him a different kind of mage. Like, if I wanted to, I could have actually bumped him down to Star Mage so he can learn Terra Star. Or I could make him go back to the Fire Mage, for example, to learn more, but it's fine. Don't need to worry about that. Okay, so these are all the rare items. I guess I could try to steal those. Just because they're named. Let's go ahead and have our melee characters summoned. Give ourself a chance to our staff masteries. This should lead to one-shots. I don't know how much the ninja will get, though. Barely any, comparatively. Like, the fact that they're the same stats shows that I'm, like, 2,000 under. Kind of blows. This should help, though. If that defense was not doubled, I think that would have killed. So what I also need to make sure that we do... I'm sure I have a high-level character. It's here for stealing purposes. Like, nothing really stops me from having multiples. Have RJ Chaos use buffs again. Improve his staff mastery. It's almost at five. It's already at four. Four might actually be good enough now that I think about it. But more doesn't hurt. Time for a parameter to clean up with Omega Star. It's a shame it makes the spell cost more and more. Don't accidentally target this character. I'm gonna bring myself all the way forward. I'm gonna go for the steals here. In fact, let me make sure I have the uh, other characters in play. Don't need Chris right now. I also try to steal with like the super movement character. There she is. Their level should be low enough that this should work. Oh, interesting, they're still not moving at all. Huh, ah, that helps me. One. I 
thought we saw it was like zero percent chance to steal. It's like what was that? Oh game, come on. Seriously? Is this happening? Am I failing all these 50-50s? There we go. Silliness that I failed that many times. I'm gonna try to steal it again. I might have to go back to the shop to get bandit hands. I should have enough spare that it shouldn't matter. I was honestly not expecting to fail that many times on a single attempt. That was kind of brutal. And Omega Ice's range is insane right now. Steal the rest of his unique items because we can. Is did he have a monster weapon equipped? Yeah, see, this is an example of like a monster weapon that has int. Or at least I think it's a, a weapon. It's shaped like one of the ones in the other game. Game with like okay stats. How? How are we feeling this consistently? There we go. I can see how good at Hercules' body is. 250, not that great. His name, though, at least. Oh, it really is just an accessory. Huh. Weird. That's definitely the graphic. I'm pretty sure that's the graphic they use in Disgaea 2. No, I'm gonna say 100%, but it looks very much like the graphic they would use in Disgaea 2. So this should just be over. There's Meteor Impact. We got it at 150, as expected. Or, we got it at 50. It's only at rank 1. I thought I used it enough that it leveled. Oh, maybe because it's a leveled up skill, we lost all proficiency with it? Is that what happened? Because there's no way. Because we, we, we migrated with 60%, so maybe you actually lose weapon skill when that happens. It's kind of lame. Or class skill, I mean. Weird. Yeah, let's go ahead and get rid of this. That somehow didn't kill him. That's actually impressive to me. Yeah, we'll let Rogue 9 finish it out. Build up his proficiencies. They attacked the... Wait, they attacked the fighter before they attacked the other character? That's funny, actually. Like, I can beat the fighter. Ninja's actually impossible. Here, I caught up, so quit your... What? What's... Thank you. Oh, huh. well, it... and don't bother to thank me. Hmm. Idiot. I meant become my... Yes, your Speak to me with res- Yes, your <laughs> ah! Did you hear that? That kid called me so- Well, you can- But- Ugh! <laughs> Still, so we have one more episode to go, and then it's the before. We'll see if it's at the beginning of the episode, or we need to clear the episode. Either way, I'm fine with it. Yeah, probably like another 20 on top of that. We're- we're done with the detours. <laughs> But hey, I don't regret improving our human characters. It is interesting to see the stats increase, at least from my standpoint. I'd like to see the visual representation of us going from taking like 800 damage down to just like 50 or even misses. evil spirits join as one, they form Pringer X, the mighty super robot! Dude, we can't do that. Here goes! Pringer Spiral Plasma Top! Gotcha! Pringer Aurora Triangle Kick! This is it! Pringer spinning drill attack! Uh, dude, hello? Next, on Lovely Mad Scientist Etna, episode 8. Farewell, Pringer X! Dude, you're killing us all? No worries. Poor Pringer Prinnies. X will be reborn as the more powerful Pringer Z! I'm telling you, it ain't gonna happen, dude. Hmm. 
Okay. Guess we'll take a break, a brief break while we let this play, get hydrated. Came back just in time. Don't try to... Huh? Just let that they were finally the only thing we can do now. <gasps> Is this what... Um... Yes? You seem different. Were you the one who gave me... Well, what are you talking... You even speak different. Well, what, what do you mean? I understand. Okay, then. Uh, thank you for your help. Blonde? Since you came... Huh? Sure. Thank good. They say that I see things the way I want, but it can't be just. All oh, right. The love is. <laughs> Episode eight: Reincarnation. La, 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 la. What? Like I said, several. Why? How should I know? Maybe they were. Hmm, come to think of it. In conditions like that. Fly by night. Uh, no. Prin. Hmm? Don't worry. I'm not worried. If people hear that I'll... That's why we're gonna find them. That's so mean. Take it easy, uh, I'm gonna save God. my confirm really? button. I'm just yeah. gonna go back to clicks. Okay. They'll so save right in front of the gate. Just in case something happens where we see new dialogue. But looking like once this is done. Important hint for me. Yeah, there we go. Go here, clean things up here. Remember studying up on how to clear these stages. Now I don't think it matters. I think we're at the point where I probably just want to use monsters, to be honest. Stages like this are very gimmicky. I don't feel like using throw tactics like how we cleared it before. I'm just gonna bop them. That'll teach them. Let's take that triple boost. I care not for what you give us. Yeah, I think we got like a massive chain in order to deal with it because they're like way back here. But this kind of level would test my patience with human characters. Like, we're already not one-shotting them for the most part, so like having to also put up with that is just, I don't think, worth the time. Let's go clean this up. But at least I could say, pretty much all the human characters got back to where they were before transmigration. To the point where I think Chris's character and Imperimeter overall had just like way better setups than they did before. Yeah, if I need mana for anything, uh, something tells me these characters alone probably have all I need. In theory, I could level up on these characters one time. I don't know how much I need, though. Speaking of which... 3, 4, 6, 6. Let's see how much we get for a kill here. I mean, like, we've got... It went from 3, 4, 6, 6 to 2, 9, 5, 5, 7, 3, so... It's not impossible for them to level again. This guy leveling might take a while. But given that we're probably going to fight like 2,000s or 3,000s before we get to the uber bosses, some of the cameo bosses being that high level, maybe they level a couple more times. Not that I need it. 
Well, unless they keep the unless they keep enemy level high, then I'll need all the help I can get. But with two of these bad boys, feeling pretty good. Uh, see, this is okay. So this is what I was talking about before. When I was trying to decide when to make new characters, this is the level I mentioned a while ago that this is the place I could have had a level one character finally level. As you can see, their levels are even low, even with enemy bill. So even if I couldn't one-shot, you know, these wall of high-level characters, potentially, I would have been able to split the XP out. So that was kind of the problem, where I needed to make another mage, but didn't get it. Because I learned, unfortunately, after doing this stage, that Laharl did not carry over at all into the other mode. Which makes sense from the story, but it also sucks that you also then get nobody else to replace them. But since these characters are lower level, there's no reason for me to not at least use Rogue Nine here. Maybe having Calvisham do some damage here. That almost killed. Oh, he put to sleep? Oh, that's nasty. I'm not finding the character. There we go. Sure, I could give Calvisham some kills. He might survive a hit or two here. At least he has one defense item on, so it's not as it's not as hopeless as it seems for survival. He did lose his massive HP boost. How did that not level him? That's actually like that that's actually like mind-boggling to me. How did that not level him? He killed somebody higher level than him. Feel a little robbed there, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I can actually have one of our super characters hold Calvisham for a second. Keep this one for Calvisham. Kill this other character. Seriously. We'll get there eventually, I guess. Yeah, 7k health means he should be able to take many hits and or protect Calvisham. Yeah, see how Putrid Breath is always hitting us? It's the difference. The ninja is able to just dodge so many hits and avoid damage. I love I have 90% fire resistance. It must be due to one of my cloaks or something. There we go. We improved Kirk stats through another character. We did it. We are the winners. kill. The fact that we're leveling up slower means we're finally catching up to some extent in terms of XP. That last little gap to go from like 80 to 100 is pretty high compared to every other gap. There we go. Improved Laharl slightly. Probably should have picked up Calvisham there. That was my bad. going in. Yeah, in theory, Calvisham could actually get okay kills. If I want him to assist, he's kind of like a mage without having magic powers. <laughs> he has the magic of gun protecting him. Just diagonal throw. Saves me some time. Nice, one of them foolishly tried hitting Kirk with melee. Easy kill. Nice easy kill, give this to whoever. Probably Rogue Nine. Now Rogue Nine is the highest he's ever been, so Laharl is 3258. Remember that for later. Almost done. Oh, speaking of which, I need to make sure for later. Away. Or bandit hands. How many did I stock? I got a couple of extra. 
Okay, that's good. I'm glad I did that, actually. So maybe this is good enough without me naming the shop again? You know what? I'm gonna clear out my inventory slightly. I'd rather just get a couple more bandit hands, because I'm gonna need to steal, I think, probably up to ten more times. Let's get rid of these while I'm here, because these are like actual trash. I can leave SP ups in here. I don't really care about that. I'll get one more set of. I'm just very nervous of running out. It would be annoying to do this later, and I'd rather do it in the bonus video. That way we can uh, focus on main story stuff for later. Okay. Since I'm already here, is there anything interesting in here? Question. Is it 150? Other thing? I think it was right is not bad. 240 inch, I want that for sure. I wish this was slightly different stats. Arm Master is actually kind of interesting. I could actually pick that up. I could make Helvetium tankier again. 211 is not that big of a stat jump. Oh, that's on in. Oh, that's what I thought it was. Um, I'll still take this. It's a small damage loss, but he also can survive better. Kind of okay with that. More importantly, we got another upgrade, I think, for Imperimeter. Yeah, that's probably worth it. Very significant jump. Uh, I don't mind losing some resistance in order to get in here. The Chaos could get some stats here if I'm lucky. Her stats are also kind of mediocre. Yeah, let's make her a little better here. I think 150 int item matters at all. Yeah, because Infernal Shield's literally as good as that currently. Because literally no purpose. I think most of our other characters actually just have decent equipment now. I think it's only... Only Flan that would care about this. Yeah, that feels like I'm in a pretty good spot overall then, if this is the extent of uh, my items. I'll leave the King Orb for later. I check the store one more time or something. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just curious about one thing. Other than our mana totals. Um for eyewear. Please just pass this. Please don't make me actually fight this. Are you kidding me? At least some of them said yay. I wanted to compare items just because we haven't done that in the playthrough. Just to see if like they have some super glasses in there. That's all I care about. The fact I have 37,000 mana is kind of funny. So in theory, they could create characters under them and I could level them with XP ups just so they get more stats. I think that's the the true genius. Get rid of you. Yeah, like these are just too tanky for the human characters to kill without some massive buffs. I'm not saying they can't one-shot them with Braveheart, but I just don't think it's worth our time. Be a more accurate statement. Nicely done. We get a couple of counterattacks here to speed things up. I don't know if poison. I don't know how status effect chance works. Like, is it just guaranteed? Like, if I'm high level, do I just auto dodge poison all the time? Like, I'm guaranteed to resist it? Because I feel like when we have a really high level, I never see it impact us. So I imagine level has something to do with it. 
Because I've also noticed that, like, when the ninja, for example, gets hit by poison, it, like, always hits him. Whereas, like, when the monsters get hit by it, they're resistant. Some character classes might also have innate resistance, so it's possible that might also be true. Like, I could just be rolling lucky. Like, I, he might have 50% resist to all ailments. And I'm just getting lucky. Kind of hard for me to tell. As I said before, a lot of this stuff is a lot more obvious in the later games. So unless I, like, really data dive in there, I'm not sure I would learn anything. But anyway. I'm just curious from the standpoint of hit. I would like to get Calvisham as super glasses, because I can. Don't need any of those. Foresight is a lot of hit, which is okay. I don't know why it's saying new, because we definitely own them. Honestly, 194 health celestial armor, I might just give to the brawlers. So their bonus isn't, or their hit bonus is just mediocre. I'm hoping to see a little better in this store, to be honest. I'm gonna reset one more time, just in case there's another pair of glasses other than Foresight. Because we saw that before, and it's kind of disappointing if that's all that was there, because then it wasn't really worth unlocking. I'm hoping we would see something new. Colonel Shield with speed is kind of funny. Yeah, most of it's not worth unlocking. Okay, one last check. I'm assuming that if it's not here, it's not here. Yeah. Unfortunate. Oops. I, well, I didn't mean to hit it there. I was actually canceling and then trying to open a menu, but I was not paying attention. I might as well check since I'm here. Uh, I guess it doesn't hurt to have extras. I finally spent through most of my cash, which is funny to me. So Calvisham having in here doesn't really matter. It is an arm master. Firefighter, I think, is giving us 41 resist to fire, which is kind of funny as I said. Um, I lose a bit of int, but I get more damage. I think that's worth it. The marksmen on it are garbage. I don't know why they're only rank 1. That feels bugged. I hope that's not intentional. It just seems really terrible, to be honest with you. I don't know why they would do that. The, the massive bonus to speed, I think, is what's keeping him alive, so I'm not going to move that. Um... Take the bonus SP, honestly, if it's between those choices. Uh, are there any other melee characters at all that we were leveling? I don't think so, right? I think so. I actually got rid of most of the mini health boosts already. I didn't even realize I did that already. So that's just gonna put on an infernal armor or something in between. I mean, I guess I could put an inf celestial armor on her, I guess. But I need it. Yeah, most of this doesn't matter. Looks like overall we got some pretty good stats. Is there any character that doesn't have items at this point? I think so. Honestly, I think the resistance is more important there. I was just double checking I didn't have a small upgrade for one of these characters. Ah, game. I don't know why I did that. Very annoying. Are we still using Dragon Jacket? Oh, we could do better than that. Yeah, that's a massive stat increase. Leave a little bit of in, get a thousand resist, four thousand defense. Oh, 
But at least there we got an easy upgrade. Like that, that was like a no contest upgrade. I like Reaper's Cloak. I think we can afford to swap it a little bit. I would like to lose a little bit of attack power to get way more defense. I think that just makes sense. Most of these other stats don't matter. Okay, let's move on. I don't see anything else worth upgrading. Okay. So not everybody is Falcon Shoes, but whatever. I'll deal with it. We have enough characters that can throw. So sadly, I was hoping we would see something new here, uh, but we saw Foresight a long time ago. Super disappointing how bad the things are in there. If those could have come with like level 40 or even 60, it would have made a pretty big difference, honestly, in their usability. I guess I could try to place the Dark Cannon. I don't know who it would target. I don't think it really matters if it hits my own allies. I'll do something like this. So if I really want to rack up a hit combo... This exists. It does, like, no damage, which is hilarious. It's so weak, because we are so weak. So if they want to kill it, I'm not going to stop them, necessarily. Oh, is it actually targeting me? Seriously? Wow, that's kind of messed up, actually. Wow. Thankfully, they killed it. I guess it just targets the nearest character, which is kind of dumb, to be honest with you. I'm like, it's already, like, not great. It's like, does it really have to be aggressive to us like that? whack. There we go. We leveled Calvisham. I'm gonna make it very difficult for them to hit Calvisham with the axe. I might get him with the sword if they bring it Slayer. That I can't really resist. Yeah. Good call there. out of the way. We are definitely going to walk in and finish him off here. Use one cutter. Get a kill, maybe. Nope, no kill. Have Calvisham get a kill. Again, his level ups matter. Goes to Kirk. So he's not going to get a lot in terms of attack towards Kirk. A more hit accuracy could be important. Summon another character here. We'll do something like I don't know, Hurricane Slash here. That'll protect Calvisham longer. It's good to see them whiffing constantly, at least. I could probably steal another kill here. Take to fire. I think I have a fire attack here. Not able to do it from here. That's unfortunate. Good enough. So gun's big downside in this game, the way they tried to balance gun, is that all of its attacks do 20% less damage. But honestly, it's still better than bow, because now you can focus purely on hit rather than mixing items, so it still ends up being better. Even though in theory, gun should be worse. Just in practice, the items are just so heavily weighted towards hit or other things like that. Where it's trying to do hit and attack, they have like no, almost no synergy outside of like celestial armor. Now, if it was like in 
and hit, then it would be like, oh yeah, that would make a big difference, but not really. Wow, that didn't kill. We finish off with Calvisham with gun. Power of gun. Thank you, Calvisha. So that's not likely to add a whole ton to Kirk's stats, sadly. Other than maybe his hit stats, since uh, his character, I think it's less than 10 attack a level, so I'm likely to see at most one attack a level. throw Kirk a little closer. And I think I can move Rogue 9 up and then throw Calvisham just a little bit further. Oh, damn, they just straight up killed- wow, they killed the Harl through that? Oh, because it's attack boost times three. I was gonna say, I was like, what the heck? Like, actual insanity. Which case... Can Imperator actually hit this from here? Attack times three is kind of a problem. I don't care about double or enemy boost times three is a problem. Didn't kill. Let's do something like this. I mean, I'm glad I did that with Laharl. Yeah, suddenly having three times less attack, I think I'll be fine now. Something tells me. Still a target high problem. It's unfortunate. Now it's like no target. So close. Everything is obstructed. Much more manageable. I'm not gonna have Calvisham steal a kill here. Ooh, like slightly further off. Unfortunate. Let's see what happens. Gonna take so much damage here. Oh. I forgot about their Omega Ice. Well, that would have been a game over normally, but unfortunately for them. Um, I am just gonna go end it with this character. Wow, that attack plus one is no joke when their stats are super huge. What was the other crystal, by the way? Was it defense down or is it attack down? Okay. I don't think that would have helped me, because what killed me was Omega Ice. I have really great defense, my resist is terrible. They were bravehearting each other. Which is fair, that led to like a big stat damage increase. Yeah, that was just, that was like actual tomfoolery. There we go. That'll teach him. I mean, they're trying. Oh, now you only magic boost? Where's your Omega Ice? Whatever. Stupid Omega Ice. Oh, now you're meleeing me? You're actually just stupid. Bonk. <laughs> okay, they deserve this. Like, that's actually just nonsense. Whatever. Okay, so we're almost done. I messed around a little bit, but we'll be fun. We still have several digits of money. Because I will need to revive pretty often in the bonus bosses, I think. But the big difference, too, is I should also just be getting my mana back for the most part. I was gonna say, I don't think this character had anything interesting. 
I figured I'd check while I'm here. Shido armor. I think that's like the first armor that gives attack and defense. But it will. What level are you guys? Honestly, not that high, but it is resistance. Eh. Guess I could still summon them in. Kirk dies, Kirk dies. That's how I view it right now. I'll try not to get him killed on purpose by wounding some of these characters. Wow, he actually could hit from there? Hmm. Let's use Overlord's Wrath for AoE. Perfect. I should have shot first with Calvisham, that was a mistake. Calvisham might die here, but at least he'll face tank. Yeah, maybe he does need like the 5,000 health increase to survive. A little unfortunate. Your impact there is huge. Let's hope I get a kill there. Can I walk up and heal with any of our characters? I guess I could at least get a kill with Chris and a parameter. So their magic damage should be super low. If they want to hit me with other abilities, that's fine. So now I'm back at a, over a thousand magic, which is good, because multi-targeting is expensive. Excellent. We're just squeezing out just a little more SP for the team. Man, their constant magic spam is so annoying. Are they all weak to the same thing? Oh, they're all weak to different things. Well, still gonna go for it. Ooh, their resistance is really high. That's not good. I was expecting to do way more damage there. Um... I don't think I have any other human characters I want to pass the kill to, so I might just summon a monster here. I'm done with it. Is there somebody with... I don't think Edna could ever possibly kill, but it would be funny if she could. I'm gonna do this to maybe save our mages here. You know what, that went better than I would have thought. Get a buff in here. I blocked my own passage on the way up, which is awkward. Almost got a kill, but Lion's Roar will make a difference here. Again, I'm going to spread them out a little more, so I make more interesting targets. They walked up and meleeed the ninja. Wow, they are just actual, like, bonkers. I don't know what they were thinking on that one. Okay, well, I guess I get a kill. Kirk is now back at the level he was before. He was, like, literally 112. But now he has way better proficiency and should just have overall better stat line here. I would have liked to have seen him go up to like 90 resist, but it's fine if he is less. It's nice that the human characters finally got something going for them. Work? That's right, dude. It's here to guide the soul if you truly And hopefully this is the last one, otherwise we have to go a little further. Huh. You sound It's what's best for the That's right. I see. You understand. Well, thank good. Then I can leave. Wait, what's in? I'm taking your own. Why would? 
to save my because of my death but he's changed it's all thanks to the wonder my work here is done you're just going to not even a good what cruel <sighs> of course I would like to reveal myself but if we are destined to part again he has suffered enough already I tried to push my idea without considering. <laughs> Prince Lon, Ed. Goodbye. There we go. Let's see if this gives us what we need, but at minimum, this should allow us to do another thing to unlock the printing lands. Which I think we did technically unlock once, or at least I did that off stream. Maybe I forgot to record. Reflected in Laharl's eyes, swaying sadly. I could get another testament from there, which is funny. A gentle, loving mother who gave up her life to save her son. So I should have a chance at an Arcadia and a testament a by the end of the game. Only accept his mother's death by denying love and kindness. And given our level, it should not be hard to steal. I can't imagine. But we'll do that for on stream. How difficult it was for him. I'm sure the red moon will wash away his sorrow. There we go. Whoa. We set up our human Whoa. characters pretty well for huh? the future, if we ever want to come back to the save file. Nothing. But Let's if nothing else, the castle. Flan. it was nice to give them some mana. Since I think they helped in the beginning, but the last two episodes in particular, they were just too slow at killing. The red moon no longer shone in his eyes. But we could see the effects of the stat ups. I'll always remember the sad tale of a mother and her son. Of a master and pupil. So in theory, Kurt could make another fighter under him just to get more stats. But I don't think that's going to happen. Given that we are probably at most four maps from being done. And at that point, we'll have everything we need for Thursday. Which should be as if it were basically new dungeons. Tons of bonus content and just absolute insanity. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a long like four hours, I think. If I really need to, we could beat the game a separate day just to show off one set of endings. But I, I don't think I need to do that before reviewing. It'll be just like quote unquote bonus content. So I might delay the release of like the actual bonus cameo stuff and group them together. I haven't decided. Since I would like to see the Earth stages, because that actually has like more plot to the ending than just like a single scene. It could be interesting to fight them, but I don't think our human characters can survive it unless we stat down them. But as is now, there's no way I can clear it with them. Warning, warning, a hero emerges to save the Earth from the vile clutches of King Lahal. His name is Captain Gordon, Defender of Earth. Bonjour! I am your own personal Dark Adonis. With his beautiful sidekick Jennifer and multi-purpose super robot Thursday, Captain Gordon takes the netherworld by storm! Another fantasy of yours, mademoiselle? Who will win this cataclysmic battle? The evil king or the defender of Earth? Pardon moi, but no one is listening. Next on Mogul Girl at Mouse Stardust Memoir, Episode 9, Invincible Captain Gordon. Soldier's tears illuminate the starry sky. Everybody, just ignore her. There we go. So we'll see if this immediately unlocks something. If it does... And we are done, otherwise we'll spend like another 15-20 minutes. I see. So we'll say time. Hey, hey, Captain Gordon, you So it took a bit longer than expected, because I was thinking it was gonna be like 40 minutes, and I'm like thinking about it, I'm like, oh, but there's a lot of cutscenes here. Like each one is like at least three minutes. Even with me mashing through. So that alone, going through that is like 20 minutes just from that. And some of the map clears were not as fast as they could be. Let me oh well. Oh yeah. I'm not going to dwell on it any further. We'll see what we can do. Sure, you don't need me to repeat this, but I am excited to potentially get another accessory though. How true. 
but yeah, this should be an absolute stomp unless I enemy build down, which as I said before, I don't know if I want to do that right away. We might just do like a couple of them here and there. I'm hoping I don't have to reduce it by more than 10, so that way we could stick to mostly cameo stuff on Thursday. Episode 9, Captain Gordon, Defender of Earth. La, 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 la. Or I might, after every cameo, get a build down. Maybe that might be a good piece. No, friends, there's some kind of anomaly in the stellar graveyard. Invaders from... I have no... Invaders? Yeah, maybe that would make sense. Every time I do it, I just I get one it. more out of the way. I think that would make sense. Oh my, let's go! And if they auto-approve, then it's very quick. In which case, I'll do them back to back to back. I'm not looking for an enhanced challenge for the most part. If they have like a little bit of a level boost, it's fine. I'd rather get their super items, just to say we have them. Okay, so is there bonus dialogue for me doing this? Alright, so nothing happened yet. Okay, so I might have to actually clear this. Which is fine, I suspected this could happen. So, once we're done with this, we should be good to go. Ooh, look how nicely bunched up they are. So this is an example of a stage where, prior to getting to Cave of Ordeals, I could just summon a whole bunch of magic users. and pump up my strength. Like, this might be worth doing. With the intent being that I will also pump up Rogue Nine and Laharl as my backups. RJ Chaos used buffs. What's RJ Chaos doing? Almost got up to five, but honestly, he unlocked Braveheart high enough. This might be what I need. Because ideally, I at minimum, I want to... Three would be ideal, and four would be perfect, and he already has it, thanks to using Brave hard enough. So if I happen to improve my range on the other characters at this point, it's nice. I did not think that through, and I blocked myself in. I think what I could do is something like this. Ooh, didn't quite get any kills. Interesting. There is huge. Then I can probably hit them with the old gear impact if I want to. Or actually, does he have his own winged slayer? Yeah, he does. Oh, it's a, oh, I was hoping he could land it, but he just can't. The terrain over there is too rocky. Unfortunate. I should be able to blade rush this though, right? Yeah, okay. Better than nothing. <laughs> Give a kill to Calvisham, because why not? The other character in the way, that's so sad. Okay. Well, I gave Kirk his bonus stats. It's now up to Kirk to finish the job. Or give this also to Calvisham. Ninety-five. I'm looking with the Laharl, actually. I'm not gonna go back. I suppose just go to the next stage. Like that ominous. Is it? Wait, is there even a? I was gonna say, yeah. There's a Geo symbol. I guess it's to avoid being surrounded. But I'm like, nah. Let's not care about that at all, actually. Do what I can here, I guess. Yeah, I remember setting this up last time. I think I threw them so that way I could get a meteor impact going. 
Right now, I don't care. We, we don't have to be optimal anymore. Oh, look at that. They all lined up for a nice meteor impact. How convenient. Oh, until they did that. That's sad. Oh, will Kirk actually die here? Oh, their damage is pretty high if they're able to kill him. Unfortunate. Well, in that case, I think it's time to break out some mages, get some kills. Nice triple kill. Ooh, still didn't get a kill after that. Hmm. I don't want to break out the monsters quite yet, but it's looking bad for our heroes. Maybe decoy one of them into coming over here, waste their time. Man, if I just had like one more damage dealer. Unfortunate. I do you love that I have some melee care? Like. A thousand damage wouldn't have been bad normally. That would have been good enough to clear most of the story mode. Uh, I think it's time to uh, summon some monsters, unfortunately. I took too much damage as Kirk. They actually managed to get enough raw stats to hurt him, which is interesting. And Laharl. Oh, Laharl actually got. Sa Kirk did not. Wait, Kirk did die? Did they low roll? Oh, I'm dead. No? Okay, you know what? We'll take those. Listen, if I if I magically survive when I have like no right to, I'll take those. Quadruple kill there is huge. I am also surprised Laharo lived. I think they just kind of misplayed out of their minds. I just gotta keep weakening them up a little more, and we should be fine. I could protect Chris somewhat by coming over here, hitting them with uh, ice. That way there's less things that could potentially target him. I think a parameter is just kind of dead here. I might as well take anybody I can on the way out. I mean, so far I haven't technically used the monster for anything, but it's looking pretty bad if I want to do monster only. One less person to attack. There's another fire spell here. You're dead. Alright, this is actually looking maybe doable now. Laurel leveling does matter. Oh, not enough to save him though. This might be GG. Let's see what they do. Try to get into a counterattack war here. Oh, that did no damage. Uh, I guess I could, cause I can't really buff the ninja. Yeah, I'm just gonna do this to save us some time. Bonk. I'll make sure to save in case something gets unlocked. new dialogue or whatever, but I didn't see the new dialogue. Oh, speaking of which, is that new bill in here? I'm gonna get that out of the way. Honeyland is here. Let's go ahead and do the vote here. So if nothing else, I'm gonna unlock content for Thursday. That's all I view this as. Sure. Persuade by force. I have an okay chance of leveling here. One of the characters was very close. It wasn't this one, it was the other one, I think. Wait. Oh, he's the one that ran it. I was like, wait a minute, that didn't make sense to me. Yeah, so he's a 2 2. This character is a 2 0. So I did level twice with him already, which is kind of funny.
This is looking kind of over for these guys, to be real with you. Fine. So if I do end up splitting XP later, I think this will make up for it because I had to do so many extra battles with the uh, bills compared to like a Disgaea complete or something. Monstrous. So there we go. If nothing else, we unlocked a new area just then. Then after that, I really don't need the stronger enemy bill. As soon as we can get the other thing, I can start doing it, but I'm not going to do it in night session. We'll do that as part of our process of just kind of one or two in between. Hopefully it should just auto-pass for making them weaker. I, I, It would really surprise me if they tried denying it. I mean, in which case, you know, it is what it is. So we might go through the Trini Land first, and then we go through the remaining ones with lower difficulty. Blade Frenzy's so good. So you have two really well-equipped characters, and honestly, attack power's not bad either. Okay, so we unlock Pretty Land. That's also important for later. Let's see. Do we get new dialogue here or no? Probably not. Okay, we did not. Okay, so let's... I mean, eventually we'll do Pretty Land. I guess we could do them in order. I do kind of want the stuff from Beauty Castle. Don't know if it really matters which one we do first. I'll double check. Pretty Land I definitely want to do pretty early on because it, there's not really a bonus character per se there. And then we could do, like, the Demon Hall Mirror later. Bonus attack. We almost one shot. These two are oh, strong against fire, is what I was gonna say. Hmm. Hopefully, at some point, he hits rank 15, but like getting the last proficiency, it just gets so slow towards the end. I'm surprised Kirk even managed to hit it. Are you seeing ice on me? That's so rude. Great counter war. I'm gonna do this and then move this character here so we could get a nice lion roar. A nice blade rush. A nice meteor impact. Even though I'm not on the additional attack power panel, it shouldn't matter here. Oh, right, there's other enemies. That matters a little more, then. Okay, let's use some attacks, then. I mean, overall, like, um, they're almost at 4,000. Kirk's now back at 5,000 exactly, so this is perfect. And keep in mind, this is without him having Testament, which had 50 more attack, so it took him a little longer to get there. Might as well just let them approach. I can Braveheart them, punish them. I mean, if he just walked up and Giga Iced me, I don't think I have that much to worry about, to be honest. This will be one of our last chances to improve RJ Chaos. And the quadruple here with the extra SP is huge. Oh, she's at 12 rank. 
Mastery, pretty good. Still not as good as Chris. <laughs> Burn Parameter. Excellent. Should be some big damage here. Should just be GG to this guy just instantly. I'm at the point where I could just feel pretty pretty confident I can one shot. Oh wow. Wait, it's 16,000 health? Why do you have 16,000 health? Holy, wait a minute. Their levels kind of went out of control. Oh man, he's still a 4k attack. Damn you, Ninja. You're so good at stalling in every other scenario, but your attack buffs are terrible. In an ideal world, you'll never dodge Braveheart again. At least that's not a thing in the later Disgaea games. I will say... I I, I will I will enjoy actually being able to buff a character with high dodge. Not that I think we'll play for with Ninja very much in our other playthrough, sadly. I think it's gonna be weirdly enough like mostly rogue, maybe a cleric. And then uh pro tags all the way through. Uh you're weak to fire, so I think what I could do is magic boost. Try to give an Aramita? Actually, we'll get Chris the kill. If he happens to kill with magic buff here, it's fine. If he doesn't, it's also fine. It's close. I'll just heal up, and this might be the final stage that we have to do. Kind of crazy how many things we've unlocked. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's not, definitely not the final stage. Looking at it, I could tell. Number-wise, not so much. I think this is the one where I did the massive chain throw, if I remember correctly. Yeah, because of the silence. Silence is kind of annoying. On the plus side, not really worried about them from a stat standpoint. Oh, Silence is oh, Silence is even active right now. My bad. I, for, I forgot it was already uh, off the table. In which case, make our way forward. A lot of enemies. Edge of zero. Nice. I would love to win cutter that if I'm able to. I think that's just one of those things that's worth attempting. And get the kill. But I could Lions Roar this. Nice. Oh, uh, not quite at level 100. We can unlock one more ninja upgrade for Rogue 9. It might improve him. Because he's now stored up enough levels that it might matter. While still getting an okay amount of kills. I don't think he'll get genius level improvements, but wow, the fact he's already at 12 is kind of nasty. as I can. Yeah, we're at the point where, like, oh, Giga Ice. Oh, no, the Gigas. They're too strong. No, they're too strong. Their resistance is honestly not that high, but it's still annoying. They kill you. Get a level up. Kill you. Get close to leveling. Can I get Calvisham to steal a kill here? Weak to fire. Nicely done. Nice, huh? I think I'm gonna go for the guaranteed kill here. Let's get wind up. Actually, just Omega Star. Do anything too fancy there. So 
we soften them up significantly. I would like magic boosts to go up. I don't care who I target. Nice. Like four and a half for efficiency. Not too bad. Oh, so then they wouldn't kill it. Oh no! They killed all the. No, they killed every damage dealer. It's annoying. I mean, it's still winnable. It's just very annoying. That's at least a one shot. Let's do Omega Fire into Rapid Fire. Maybe this will work. Ooh. Oh, he's got 3,200 persists. I was wondering why that did no damage. Um. Yeah, she's just not gonna land a hit here, sadly. I might be able to decoy her, have her die instead, which would be huge. You know what? We'll take that. Now we just need to stack with Chris first. I think I can win without using a monster? That to me is the real challenge right now. I happen to kill the other target, great. I think this will work. Nicely done. Now it should be doable. Don't have to worry about two deaths here. Oh, Calvisham actually survived. In which case... Good job, Calvisham. Your stats actually mattered there. Sadly, we don't have any, like, super health items left. They're already equipped on other characters. We have a lot of bandit hands for the future, at least. Nicely done. Ah. This looks like this is it, then. Potentially. <laughs> assuming something- <laughs> assuming the wiki is correct. That is a big assumption to have. Um, I think what I'll do is get our mages out. Wait, I didn't have RJ Chaos. Let's make sure RJ Chaos gets a buff. Probably afford to put Frost on the other side because of his agencies. We'll just make sure Laharl, Rogue Nine. Well, they'll probably never buff Rogue Nine, sadly. Berk. I could unequip him to improve the odds of doing it, but it's kind of obnoxious. I try to level Edna, I guess. In case I'm really desperate to win with only humans. Not like the monsters need a buff. Okay. The Kirk is as strong as he's ever been. Now reset some people. I didn't actually see what Rogue Nine stats got up to. Did they actually improve? One buff? Seriously? Like two buffs at most? Damn, that really sucks. Ooh, they're neutral to damage? That's not good for them. I definitely want to have Rogue Nine bait out Gordon. I'd prefer if they attack each other there. Let's use Laharl and friends to weaken these two. I should be able to kill him with a mage attack since he doesn't have a resistance. Wow, they just ignored everybody? That is so rude. Right, magic buff time for sure here. Do as much damage as we can. How dare they ignore that? What's your resistance? Terrible. You have a rare Cobra Fang though. Is that worth stealing?
sure. I'll, I'll see if stealing it gives us another one or something. Game, please. Uh, rip this poor, poor monster as it's about to get destroyed. Okay, that should be a free kill to whoever wants it. Guess I'll give it to Laharl. Now I can start laying on the hurt on this guy, who is ignoring me for some reason. What I can do is actually push him further away if I need to. I could do Night Sever into knocking him backwards to delay him. That keeps most of our mages safe. Even with his gun there, it really doesn't matter. He's got 8 wind resists. I got bad news for him. It is not gonna matter what his resist is. Up to four and a half magic on RJ Chaos. Better than nothing. I think it is now over. GG. Nicely done. Let's see if we unlock something. Inadvertent flan lately. Seraph! Seraph! It is always a serious matter. Flon has killed. What? Flon? That's right! Even if she is this. But still, that is odd. Well, well, well at any rate, I I'll be using some. Very well. Yes, sir! Hmm. I never. Now then. Everything will be fine. Everything will be fine. You better hope so. now unlock them perfect end of episode so honestly we do want to go for the earth ending it's not that far away now now that we have the defender of earth on our side our space adventure hi everyone this is it's your hero, like what 14 Captain episodes Gordon. and we're on episode 10 that's it not too bad as all of you know i am the 37th defender of earth as the name suggests it is my duty to defend the earth what lies ahead of no matter what lies ahead, I swear on my honor and the name Defender of Earth that evildoers shall not escape. That is my mission. Next, Next on Captain Gordon, Defender of Earth, Episode 10, Angels, Demons, and Humans. Look forward to my adventures. Ha 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 ha! Okay, so hopefully with this, we're going to see the dialogue. Gordon. Or if nothing else, Gordon. as I mentioned before, we're not that far Gordon. away from completely beating the game if we want to see the normal endings. But I think best Old ending is good enough. Days. We don't need to see every possible ending. Even when we play something don't like Squeak It In, we don't show every ending. Unless uh, it's, like, convenient. Like, it's easy to get early bad endings, which is what we did in Disgaea. But I don't want to get, like, every flavor and shade of these endings. I think we've it's basically run its course. Why not? It's Etna and Flan are going to show me around. Why don't you come along, Hart? Come on, come on. Joking, Jennifer. I just want to know. Was this all for naught? Was the wiki right? It said we needed Gordon. It said episode nine. But that doesn't make sense, because you don't get Gordon technically until episode ten. Where should we go? So they should have said start of episode ten. So how about the Sea of Gehenna? Why? It's so hot over there. Why can't I advance this dialogue? What kind of a place is it? It's a big tourist spot. Since you're new to the Nether Wait, this is auto advancing dialogue? Why? Is there a souvenir shop around? Why is the wait, why is this dialogue like this? I don't even think I noticed the first time I played the game. souvenirs you're looking That's horrible. I can't even speed this up. They've got nice mummy heads. Sky one, please. How adorable. Hey! The Nether Year 666 Limited Edition model! I want one! <laughs> Too bad! Okay, today it's a picnic at the Sea of Gehenna, and tomorrow it's shopping on Sacrifice Street. Sounds like a plan! I'm in! Now 
by just plain pity, you gourd. Alright, we're going to the sea of I will never, ever allow the Yeah, so ten I'd have to be ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So that'd be four episodes. Well, to go to the earth going, ending. Mother. And then if I want to beat the final episode, I could get the normal ending. That's, that's not too bad. Once you're already at the final episode, beating an episode doesn't matter. Angels, demons, and humans. It's more getting through these intros and outros, which is very painful, I will say. Not my favorite. But hey, we should be able to get Arcadia, which I remembered right as we ended the other stream. That's what I was trying to think of. To be able to get an Arcadia and another Testament. So, I'm pretty sure we're good to go. Let's see if we get bonus dialogue. We do, we're gonna close it. Okay, there we go. Prince, we have a problem with something powerful is appeared in the Stellar Graveyard. So, out of curiosity... Yeah, suddenly that's rank 65. I'm gonna skip the story, I just want to take a look right now. Because this is brand new to me. Oh my gosh! Okay, we need to 100% lower the difficulty of this. This is not doable. Every single one of them is insane. Honestly, we can actually out-attack them. The problem is this character. Oh! He has a legendary Arcadia? Oh! Also, is that 9 million health? What the hell is this? Okay, well, I mean, if I can beat this character, I think I could beat everything, because this is honestly, like, pretty ball stats. I'm not gonna lie, like, it's pretty close. 9 million in health. But, yeah, we're not fighting him at level 999. <laughs> I would like that Arcadia, though. So, we'll, we'll leave it there. So, I guess moral of the story is, we definitely need to lower the difficulty if we want to steal those items. I don't know if he comes with them automatically, but it would be funny if I could steal them and then I get them automatically too. That's where I'm not sure, based off of what happened. Actually, we can check one thing before I go to the Let's Chant. When I robbed Thursday earlier, oh, so it was a completely different set of equipment, so I think I can dupe it, because he had a legendary Cobra Fang earlier. Hmm, interesting. I could give her some hand-me-downs, I don't really care. Yeah, there's that 10 attack for it. Oh, this equipment is so underwhelming now. So sad. I don't know if any of these stats really matter, to be honest. I think they do. Okay, so it looks like we can steal it, so I think what I'll do as a safety precaution, since now we potentially have a lot of items to steal, I'm gonna buy two extras preemptively, because we need as many as I can. That honestly might not be enough, because we have to steal potentially, like, ten or... No, maybe, maybe eight items, which is still a lot, so if I fail twice on each of them, like, I get once and then I grab it again, then I think at that point... Actually, I could probably save after this dialogue. Then I think after this point, that means I would be able to zoom up to... If it's 8 items times 2, I'd still need 16, which would be my entire inventory. It's very likely I'll need more than 2 to clear. I just want to see, is this a guaranteed legendary, or is it just random that I got double legendary? That I also kind of want to know. Seems guaranteed. Yeah, these... These conditions are really terrible. This alone might make me get another 999 in here. But then again, he's not going to be level 9000. If he's not level 9000, I don't think I care. So yeah, it really just depends on if I want to try this challenge with our current characters. So just out of curiosity, since I'm here and we're at the end anyway. How much does this do? Ooh, 
That's all we did? Wow. How much did they do in return? Wow. That's with all the testaments on? That's how much they're doing? It feels like I'm not even buffed. That's ins that's actually insane. So yeah, we would have to... Just kill one of the symbols, which isn't too bad. But then it turns it green, which buffs the enemy. Wait, did he just teleport? Wait, how did he... Oh, yellow is a warp. Oh, that's... Well, that's kind of evil. Ew. Oh, okay, I'll have to think about this stage later. Ew. So I can get rid of ally damage 80%, which I think we do need to do. But only after we kill everything in here. Yellow's the only safe space. But it could warp me on a tile, like, back here and kill me. Ew. Okay, I need to think about this. So, wow, their stats are super, super high. There's no way we would survive this fight. Even if I had eight, nine thousands, I actually don't think it would be good enough here. We are definitely going to lower difficulty by at least ten by the time we get here. We might be able to beat them if they're in, like, six thousand range, where we potentially legitimately remove, like, twenty to thirty thousand attack from their stats and lower their resistances by just a teeny bit more. Uh, but yeah, as is, actually insane. So I definitely want to show that off to chat. I want to see their reactions without any context. But anyway, that's it for now. So I guess thank you for sticking around in this bonus session where we just cleaned up some things. And I recorded just in case anything too crazy happened. But basically not too much happened. Sadly, the one story mode where we could optionally win didn't produce any additional cutscenes. So a bit of a miss there. But hey. I did get all the chat characters basically back to where they were, and I basically showed how strong our party has become, where they can more or less clear a 20, 20 enemy stronger bill buffed story mode for the most part without any monsters. So for now, thank you again for watching, and I guess see you in the bonus session of uh, just non-stop cameos, I guess, minus a couple of uh, build downs for weakness.